Our text for today is taken from the fourth chapter of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 4, we'll begin reading with verse 8 and read through verse 12. Acts 4, 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. And then Peter delivers the clincher in this next verse. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word today. I ran across an amusing story recently, a true story. It happened during a horse race one Saturday night back in the 1970s in West Virginia. It was about midway through the race. The horses are running around the track as fast as they can. They're all bunched close together. And the jockey on one horse, he raises his whip to hit the horse to get the horse to run faster. But when he did, he missed his horse and hit the horse right beside him. And when he hit that horse, that horse, of course, bolted and jumped and threw that jockey off. That jockey was left eating dust on the track. But as they collided, the jockey who did the hitting, it shot him straight up in the air. And when he came down, he landed on the other horse. <laughs> well, what could he do? He just hung on and finished the race. And according to the story, he wound up coming in sixth place. But, when they went to divide the purse and pay the jockeys, they would not pay this jockey. Their explanation was, yeah, you finished the race, but you finished on the wrong horse. <laughs> you finished the race, but you finished on the wrong horse. I'm afraid that same story is going to apply to a lot of people when it comes to the end of their race called life on earth. That is, they'll finish the race all right, but they'll finish on the wrong horse. They will have run the race of life believing they were on the right horse, but then they'll discover they were on the wrong horse. In Peter's words to the Sanhedrin Council, he lets them and us know that there's only one way to be saved, only one way to reach heaven, only one way to win the race of life, and that is, as the choir sang, and as we all sang, Jesus, only Jesus, in Christ alone. And because of that, any other way is the wrong way. Any other horse is the wrong horse. Any other horse is the losing horse. Today I'm going to give you four of the wrong horses that people are riding these days. Four of the many things that people are trusting in and relying on in order to have a saving relationship with God. The first wrong horse is named Deeds. Deeds. Now, obviously, our race of life should be marked and filled with good deeds. We all know that. We all agree with that. But, depending on our good deeds to save us, is riding the wrong horse. There is simply no quantity or quality of good deeds that can save us from our sin. But there are many people who actually believe that they can actually do enough good deeds in order for them to be saved. They believe they can actually earn, deserve, and merit their salvation. You could go out here tomorrow and find a cure for cancer. On Tuesday, you could end every war 
being fought in the world. On Wednesday, you could erase all hunger and poverty from the world. And on Thursday, you could eliminate all corruption and injustice in the world. That'd be a pretty good week, wouldn't it? Sure would. But folks, all of those good deeds would not save you of a single one of your sins. So, ride this horse named Good Deeds for the sake of our world and our fellow man. But please do not ride this horse named Good Deeds for the salvation of your soul. For as good a horse as this is, is still the wrong horse. The second wrong horse is named decency. Now, as it is with deeds, decency should be found on the race of each of our lives. For if our world needs anything today, it needs more decency. But to rely on our decency to save us from our sin, that's riding the wrong horse. No amount or application of decency on our part can save us from our sin. But again, there's a lot of people who equate their being decent with their being saved. Folks who believe that their decency qualifies them for salvation. But my friend, you can be the most decent spouse to your spouse to be found. You can be the most decent parent to your children in the whole wide world. You can be the most decent children to your parents, the most decent sibling to your siblings, the most decent friends to your friends. You can be the most decent worker at your place of work, the most decent student at your school, the most decent citizen to your country and community. But all of your decency cannot and will not save you from a single one of your sins. So again, ride that horse named decency around the racetrack of life. But please do not ride the horse named decency in order to have a saving relationship with God because as decent as that horse is, it's still the wrong horse. And then the third wrong horse is named dollars. Now, to get around the racetrack of life, we have to have money. If we don't have money, we don't even get out of a stable on the track. We have to have money. But to depend on our money to save us from our sin is riding the wrong horse. However, a lot of people actually believe that they can buy their salvation. Why do people believe this? I'll tell you why. Because in our world today, if you've got enough money, you can buy practically anything or anyone. If you've got enough money, you can buy jobs and careers. You can buy degrees and diplomas. You can buy elections and votes and appointments and offices. With enough money, you can buy judges and juries. With enough money, you can buy wars and battles. With enough money, you can even buy people for all kinds of reasons and motives. And with enough money, you can buy championships and trophies in the world of athletics. You name it, and it can be bought, except for the salvation of our soul. No person can make and spend enough money. No mint can mint enough money. And no nation can print enough money to buy salvation for a single one of our sins. When it comes to our salvation, our money is no good. It's worthless and it's useless. So ride this horse named Dollars around the racetrack of life in the proper way. But please don't ride this horse thinking that it's going to save your sin. It will not. It cannot. For as powerful as that horse is, it's still the wrong horse. And then there's a fourth wrong horse named DNA. DNA. What do I mean? I'm talking about one's family, one's kin, one's folks, one's relatives, one's blood. Now, we all need our family to help us around the racetrack of life. But 
to depend on our family for our salvation is riding the wrong horse. And yet you would be surprised, no, you'd be shocked to know how many people are riding this horse. How many folks are depending on their folks for their salvation. I read this amusing paragraph recently. It's fictitious, of course, but it makes my point. This man passed on, and of course, when he got to heaven's gate, he was met by St. Peter with his roll book, you know, the book of life. And Peter said, sir, I'm sorry, but I, I don't see your name here. And the man said, well, there's got to be a mistake. You better look again, Pete. So Peter looked again. Sir, I'm sorry, your name's not here. And the man was adamant. He said, it's, it's got to be here. It's got to be there. Why, Peter said. Well, let me tell you. Granddaddy was a preacher. Grandma played the piano at the church. Daddy was a deacon. Mama sang in the choir. I had a brother who was a foreign missionary over in Africa. I had a sister who worked for a Christian publishing company. I had a cousin who worked for Billy Graham. I had another cousin who worked for Rick Warren. I had another cousin who worked for Charles Stanley. And I got a niece who works for Beth Moore. I gotta be saved. You get my point? You get my point. Now, I'm not making fun or light of having a godly family. Of course not. Of course not. Praise God for our saved serving family members. But, folks, our saved serving family members cannot save us from a single one of our sins. They can influence us in the right way. But save us? No. They cannot, they will not, and they do not. So, ride and treasure this horse named DNA. But please, don't ride this horse for your salvation. For as wonderful a horse as it is, it's still the wrong horse. There are many other horses found in the stables and on the racetracks of life that people ride on. Attractive, appealing, awesome horses. Fine, fancy, fast horses. Good, even great horses. But my friends are all the wrong horse. Only one person can save you from your sin. Only one person can give you victory in the race of life. Only one person can take you across the finish line and put you in the winner's circle. Jesus. Only Jesus. In Christ alone.